Welcome back to Jersey Matters. The mental health of all Americans is a concern during this pandemic, but those on the front lines are especially at risk. Our Kimberly Jade reports on one New Jersey police department that is making mental health a top priority. According to Blue Help, a nonprofit that collects data on police suicides, there were 37 officers that reportedly took their life from the years 2016 through 2019. And New Jersey's law enforcement community is coming together to combat this growing problem. One is, one is absolutely too many. Um, the job is hard and it gets harder, I think, every year. Um, and, and we really need to start putting a lot of effort into this. And um, we, you know, we can't rely on the way we did things for 20 or 30 years. Attorney General Gabir Graywall came up with a resiliency directive last August, and it was a starting point for tackling the issue of suicide in the Garden State. The township of Long Branch decided to build a resiliency room to help their officers deal with the day-to-day -day pressure of their jobs. It's a uh, it was a underutilized office. It's available to anybody 24 seven. So when so when they're working, they can they can go there or even if they're off duty, they can they can go there. It was important for us that it not be here. And the idea was to have a place where they can go and relax and chill out or even more importantly and more seriously to have a place where if we did have a critical incident, that there would be some some privacy. The quiet room is located away from the police headquarters on the second floor of the building in Long Branch. The items that you see in the room were all donated from township employees. Um, if they don't want to be seen going in and out, they, they don't really have to be. Not long ago, New York City saw a rash of suicides within law enforcement. Luckily, Chief Roebuck of Long Branch has not seen that in his department, and he plans to keep it that way. Thankfully, no, we have been, we have been lucky. And we want to keep it that way, although there are um, stories of many officers from surrounding towns um, that have unfortunately taken their life. But um, we have been lucky here so far, and we want to keep working at it. Mental health advocate Steve Simpson knows all too well how tough it is to deal with the issues of suicide. We asked his thoughts on how to improve the mental health of our law enforcement. So number one, like I said again, definitely frequent visits from a social worker, psychologist, okay? And, and, and anybody, so that you're not picking on one officer, you know, why do I have to see one? You know, I think just on a friendly, and cons I said the word consistent, because six months can go by and something can change. Now I read that they're having those safe rooms, so to speak, where they can kind of lounge in the middle of the day and just unwind. That's important. And I will also say, talking to the offices, whether you want to call them self-help groups or just chat groups amongst themselves, I think in those rooms and they can just talk to their peers and align with each other. The department welcomes anybody that is interested in donating to the Long Branch Resiliency Room. They definitely need to contact the chief of police <laughs> and uh, let them know that they would like to donate and that would be really great and we would really appreciate it. And the hope is that these resilience room become a trend in the coming years throughout other police departments throughout the country. Reporting from Long Branch for Jersey Matters, I'm Kimberly Jade. All right, thanks a lot, Kimberly. Still to come, with children online more than ever during this pandemic, how do you know they're safe? We'll talk about it when Jersey Matters comes right back.